Time to solve all our problems with chainsaws. Make the infinity inter eternity devil bleed. Yeah, what a jerk. Sacrificing his own well-being. Here we go. <laughs> right into the mouths. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. I wasn't aware of what a fan favorite she was when I filmed the last episode. Boy, did I find out. Oh my... Yeah, using Demon Sphere against them for a change. I don't think he wants to kill it. I think killing it's a mistake because then it comes back. Just gotta keep this up for as long as possible. It's all your fault. And I love you, don't... I love you. I love her. She's great. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be great later. Everyone stop being afraid. Stop being afraid. Your fear is feeding it and making Denji's chance of winning be greatly reduced. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Quick, think about kissing or boobs or whatever it is you deprave people. <laughs> Usually occupy yourselves with. Meanwhile, Makima is sitting comfortably in her in her office, scheming of ways she can destroy men. Still got your head. Oh man, already? I feel like someone's gonna help him. Oh wow, he just ate him for sustenance. It's a battle of who can generate more fear. I wonder if this isn't, isn't a metaphor in itself. So this is a show that covers a lot of themes about primal drives. Things that are 100% there but are buried super deep and are not allowed to bear their full form. These raw animalistic drives that are probably the underpinning of humanity even though it's not the, the full extent of humanity. And there are these unquenchable desires in there that have so much potential energy that tapping into them would make almost anything possible. I was actually just thinking that to strive for the, the heights of those desires, you know, power, conquest, which is very closely related to sexual desire, I think, means entering into a world that's just unbelievably competitive and requires you to do things that beat out the vast majority of people with the very same unquenchable desires that you have. Which means in order to get there, you're going to have to do things that no one else is willing to do. So there's like a little bit of craziness that that requires. Not saying this is like the, the ultimate mission of life or that this is what it will make people happy. I actually think it probably doesn't. I think it contains the roads to ruin for many people. But just saying you want to accomplish something like that. It seems like there's an extent to which comfort, happiness, a lack of fear and stability cut against you. A lot of people are not actually stable because they are really robust and stable, but because of a sort of willful delusion that they don't want certain things or they're just not thinking about the pain. They're not thinking about rising to any of those ranks just because they're aware on some level of the difficulty and the, the frustration of losing in it. To embark on a mission like that, you have to be kind of crazy. And so in a show where sort of the foundation is this like animal raw instinct and they're slaying literal demons that are terrifying, they have to kind of let that insanity run its course. And I think there's a metaphor for the fact that same people can't cut it. Demon hunting is a different realm of life. It's the animalistic. And to win in the game, I think you kind of have to be an animal yourself. <laughs> Right, yeah. It's such an impossible task. Where do you even get the energy? Uh, she's of the same breed they are. That was a lie. Denji is sort of the right kind of crazy, because he's like a pure crazy, if that makes sense. The question is, can he get to where he needs to get? Can he conquer all of it? Can he be a crazy animal and demon slayer and rise to the top, but also get out with his soul intact? I don't even know what they expect to do if they encounter the gun devil. They're struggling with its pieces. It's gonna take more than three chainsaws. It's gonna take a squad. I love this focus on the two of them. It's really interesting. Trying to pull them into a normal life. It would be sweet. It would be sweet. It would be great. We're going after the biggest demon. Seems very likely. She's trying to protect him. That's also partly her protecting herself, her attachment to him. I don't know, he's chosen his path. Someone's gonna get, had to get in here, like ASAP. 
きらめいたぜてめえが俺に切られて血流して This could turn into like an infinite battle, yeah Something's gotta give It's gonna be the eternity demon Oh, he just stole <laughs> He just stole power's dream You hear that power? That's why he's gonna be successful. Yeah. It's hard to explain, but there's something so perfectly in line connected with Denji. 12 hours later, everyone else went to sleep in their comfy beds <laughs> and had panic attacks. It's all your fault. I love it, but I love her. She's great. She's the best. I'm sure she'll be good later. I'm dying of boredom because <laughs> it's been forever. But they actually are starving, right? I thought food would be infinite. Oh, yeah, you also got stabbed. The power is dying of boredom. Getting a little close there. Oh, I see. He got to his actual heart. So it's actually dead. Thank you, Denji, for doing all of that by yourself. Putting it on your back. Saving all of our lives single-handedly. And also, pack your shit. <laughs> pack your shit and get out. Just kidding. I'm sure they'll be great. I'm not gonna mention any names, uh, Chobeni, uh, Kobeni. But, but, you could turn this into an opportunity for motivation. Admittedly, it was a tough assignment. It was a little bit difficult. Hey, nice. Classic. <laughs> Work drinks. That's it? Why? <laughs> Ooh, we got ourselves a little bit of a love triangle. We got ourselves a love triangle. Maybe her teacher with the scarred face was right. There's something here about her not being crazy enough for this. She's trying to get out. She's looking for another way to her own happiness and salvation than slaying the greatest demon. And there's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, it could be great. She can be really fulfilled and find, you know, a different kind of meaning in her relationship or the, her desired relationship with Aki. Though I can't help but think, just given the, the symbolism of the show so far, and especially this episode, that there's a, a danger in that. I've experienced this too. Like, this might be a little bit too personal for this reaction, but I just got out of a very intense relationship about two months ago, and reflecting on how it happened and why it went down the way it did, I realized that for me, it was kind of a, a lifeline out of facing more difficult and more important problems, because it felt really good. And it, it sort of gave me something in hand that satisfied the, the ache, you know, which on some level, like I said, is fuel and can be useful and necessary to a certain point to try to ascend to any kind of higher rung on a certain track, even if it's not the, the highest or most beautiful track. And of course, that's not all it was. That was just a dimension of it and partly to explain why I, I got so deep, why I was so willing to overlook other things that I would would have otherwise on paper said were more important. Sometimes there's this fear that doesn't even always make itself visible to the conscious mind that comes from the knowledge of what it would take to do better, if that makes sense. You know, what it would what it would take to achieve like the highest possible satisfaction. The biggest demon, I've been calling it. Thinking about it now, along that same line of thought, the path Denji's on will never be satiated. I mean, already we have a little bit of evidence for that, that trajectory because he already got three squeezes of powers boobs and immediately was thinking about what's next that's never going to end she really really loves him as a tool did she come did she show up I feel like it's a danger and a huge liability to let power get drunk. Shoot her nicely. Let's give her a chance. <laughs> Kamakima is coming. To my brother. She legit is like a wild animal that you try to rehabitate. Rehabitat? This is my first time at a restaurant. <laughs> Kiss tempura. The man is consistent. Not in front of Aki. <laughs> Give it a few drinks. Everyone will trust each other and then regret it the next day. My hobbies are boobs and boobs. Shh. No one needs to know. <laughs> Look, we're risking our lives fighting gun devils, etc. Eternity devils. You can have a beer. 
Interesting. So it can be shared. Down bad. <laughs> Interesting and very topical translation. Does that mean the other seven are sex workers? <laughs> I can see that. So you mean I didn't need to <laughs> fight the attorney devil for 14 hours? Ooh. That just changed the whole energy when she walked in. It's sort of amazing. She has so much presence. How do they do that? How do they build her that way? Oh, for real? Yeah, I guess she just is so in love with Denji as a tool. She's more available to him. I just do it. <laughs> As if Makima is... Oh my god, Denji. Denji, run. If you don't kiss her, was gonna marry you. <laughs> what a big boy you are. Makima Denji I don't think she's drunk yet. I don't think she's the kind of person to get drunk. She's just... Or to have her demeanor change when she's drunk. Run! <laughs> oh, you fool. You beautiful fool. I love you for trying. Makima's fine. She's 100% fine. Alright, this is sort of a, a dicey story to tell here, but in honoring the show's themes... <laughs> a really long time ago, when I was first in Korea, I was out with two girls, one of whom I really liked. And they had met a guy that I... Not proud of this. I was super threatened by. He was just so good looking. He was so charming. But to my credit, also kind of a jerk. Privately with me. He was saying things that were kind of jerky about my friends. But just full transparency for the story, that wasn't my real motivation. The main motivation was that I was I was jealous. But anyway, we go to a, a bar like this, but it, it was a private booth with a sliding door. And my great idea was just get him really drunk. And so... I said, I heard people from your country are terrible at drinking, which he took as a huge challenge. And we just immediately started drinking as much and as fast as we possibly could in competition for these girls who honestly probably didn't give a crap about what either of us or had already made up their minds and there was no reason for the rivalry. Anyway, we we're just drinking and drinking and drinking and I legit thought I was going to die. I regretted ever making that challenge. The only thing fueling my consciousness at that point was extreme pettiness. And I was ready to throw in the towel and die when he suddenly stop what he was doing and just threw up all over the table. At which point it's like, all right, it's time to go home. So the girls go to the bathroom before we go and me she's sort of being on a roll and having this really weird elated high of victory took it a step further, maybe a step too far and picked him up and carried him into the hallway and opened the door to the opposite booth that was empty, laid him down where he passed out, closed the door. And then when the girls came back, I told them he had, he had gone home. And I think the most embarrassing part of it to tell now is how great I felt. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. It was the most pointless victory ever. But yeah, I mean, speaking of primal urges, there's not a lot more primal than competing over someone you like. Well, she's hanging on by a thread. If there's one thing that we know about power, it's extremely high IQ. No one cares. <laughs> sure, whatever. Oh, she just went for it. <laughs> a lot of poignant sweat drops in shows I'm reacting to recently. Oh, wow. Stop thinking and just enjoy it. <laughs> oh! My God! That was his first kiss. That's actually happened to me too, speaking of embarrassing stories. Don't! 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 You don't need to swallow it. What would Pochita think now? What would Pochita think now? What does Pochita think about this? <laughs> I'm stunned. <laughs> oh, I see. It wasn't. It was his first kiss, but not his first time eating vomit. That's great. <laughs> this is an incident that will live in infamy in the office forever. <laughs> so sorry, Denji. Oh, was she also a hostess? A lot of hostesses and shows I'm watching too lately. I have experience with that too. That was rough, honestly. That was real rough. Sorry, Denji. I demand a redo. Hihime <laughs> <laughs>
Was she like abduct him? The pure girl, as she will herefore be known as. Is this his first time? This is a surprising turn of events for Denji. <laughs> yeah, act innocent, all you want. This is his first hangover, too. Everyone noticed. Everyone knows. Oh, yeah. I can understand why she would not like Makima. That cuts deep. There is nothing more primal than romantic competition. I'll make you forget all about Makima. <laughs> of course he does. Then he's moving fast. <laughs> he's just a rocket ship through the bases. Thanks to everyone's favorite friend, Alcohol. Oh, yeah, and also saving their lives and battling with Eternity Demon for eternity. And being kind of cute. You know, he's not a bad looking kid. As far as anime is concerned, I don't know. Hard to tell. Oh, it's like. After work drinks the RPG. It looks like Persona, like an old Persona game. Be kept to be killed. <laughs> so accurate, so correct. Everyone's fan favorite. They're just slowly losing clothing. Oh no, the puke! Rainbow puke! Oh my god, this is horrific and great at the same time. I saw- I'm not over that scene. So really, uh... It's a, it crosses into a bold new frontier of bizarre greatness. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. It's just every scene is great. Honestly, it's really refreshing. I don't think I've seen anything like this before. It, it like it does cross into some territory that's kind of taboo, but it's just fun. Anyone who likes to party or has had prolonged periods in their life where they party a lot has seen tons of shit like this in real life. But then you don't see it represented in media as a thing. I'm kind of shocked. I have so many wild stories from that time, and I guess I'm making more now recently due to being being single that I've I never really told, and generally I'm not comfortable telling. <laughs> but this show, like, because it's so different, I feel it's it's fitting. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they make the this romance stuff, this tension between the the cast members, so juicy. It just feels so fun. But at the same time, I feel like it has a much larger significance and meaning. Which is not accidental, you know, because there's gonna be a connection between the base, real animal nature and some kind of truth about humanity. In fact, I think an easy way to go wrong, that happens a lot, that actually anime does right, because this is often the villain's point of view, is somehow thinking that humans are above this animalistic stuff, that there is no animal component, that we've now graduated to a point where we're just, you know, thinking machines, and that anything like morality, or understanding our psychology, or understanding our direction, or understanding purpose, can be divorced from our natural drives that have been hard crafted over tens, hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years, billions of years, depending on how you look at life, as if suddenly, you know, human conception, which came about in the last, what, couple hundred thousand years, is more powerful than a practical eternity of universal development, you know? It's the villains that think like that, right? It's the villains in anime who are like, I have become more than animal and I'm now a god. Humanity being disgusting for their, whatever, their natural impulses. I think part of the mistake is assigning a judgment to it and thinking that humanity can't be beautiful despite having base desires. I think humanity is most beautiful when viewed in its entirety, which includes both those animal desires, and then also a higher rational functionality that can allow for something more transcendent. It's like, how do you achieve a transcendent scale if there is no scale? The scale has to be something like an objective-ish or more objective truth about what the world is and therefore what you are. Very fun. Every episode just makes me more and more excited for the show.